All right, so um, now we have uh, Roberto Villaflor with uh, his second lecture on periods of outbreak cycles and hot loss cycle. Uh, does it sound? Yeah. So thank you again. Um, okay, so uh, today I will focus more on the on the idea that I introduced uh, yesterday. So let's just recall that. So we're in this in the following context. Okay. So you take x a smooth degree d hypersurface of even dimension. Uh, of the projective space and uh, take some Hodge cycle, right? Which is non trivial in primitive cohomology. Okay. So, in particular, it induces a Hodge loci and uh, I mean a non trivial Hodge loci and uh, and we associated to this guy, uh, well, a polynomial, right? Since you can write this element in the as a residue form, right? And uh, from this, you can introduce an Artinian, uh, the Artinian, Artinian Gorenstein ideal associated to it is for us this uh, JF delta, which is just the quotient ideal of the Jacobian ideal divided by this polynomial, okay? Uh, well, so yesterday I tried to show you a result where one can exploit the full information of this ideal, not just the degree d piece of this uh, ideal, right? Because the degree d piece uh, corresponded to the first order approximation to the associated Hodge loci, but uh, this thing has more information. And uh, well, I, I try to show you like one application of this, how, how to use this to say something about the Hodge loci. Um, Okay, so today what I want to do is to focus mostly on this ideal and uh, raise some questions about it and, and if we can say something interesting about the associated Hodge loci or the associated Hodge cycle from read, reading it from, from this idea. Okay, so... Um, doesn't matter, doesn't matter. Um, okay, remark. Uh, so, one important thing about this Artinian Gorenstein ideals is that, uh, in fact, if if you have one, um, of some circle, then uh, the ideal is is uniquely determined by just the uh, graded piece at the circle degree, right? And that, this is because uh, for the other degrees, uh, this is just the space of polynomials of degree E such that they uh, annihilate everything, right? So in the question. Right, so you, you can rebuild your Artinian Gorenstein ideal just from this piece, and this piece is an hyperplane, right? It's, it's the hyperplane of the degree sigma piece of, of the polynomial ring. And so just, if, if you know that two Artinian Gorenstein ideals coincide at the circle, then they are the same, okay? So this implies a, a a very important property, I think, uh, in my opinion, it's very important, uh, which is the following. So you have that two 
associated artin goldstein ideals are equal uh, if and only if in primitive cohomology uh, they are equal projectively up to a non-zero constant, right? And so wh why is this so important for me is, is you are characterizing this guy in primitive cohomology. This is what determines the associated Hodge loci, right? Up to a scalar multiplication, right? So this equality is characterizing the, the equality of Hodge loci, right? So this implies in particular that B delta one is the same as a scheme as B delta two, right? And this is uh, very simple, see? So let me explain uh, the proof of this. So, and for me, why, why is this important philosophically? Because since this is determining your entire Hodge loci, it should has strictly more information than just the first order approximation, right? So all the higher order approximations should be encoded in some hidden way in this, in this idea, okay? So the proof, uh, so it's like this. Well, well one, one direction is trivial, right? This implies this. But uh, so assume that you have this, right? And, um, okay, so, uh, what was it? So pick some Q, which is in, uh, okay, so these guys had Sokol uh, in degree uh, D minus two times n over two plus one, right? I, I will call this guy sigma. And uh, recall that the circle of the Jacobian idea is twice this number. It's d minus two times n plus two, which is two sigma, okay? So pick some q, which is in q sigma, and it's not in the, uh, I don't remember, the Jac yeah, in any of these. Well, they are the same, right? And degree sigma. So you know that this guy exists just because the quotient is one dimensional, right? And so, uh, and so now uh, you will have that um, this P delta I times Q, they live here in two sigma, right? But uh, since Q is not in this quotient ideal, this is not in the Jacobian ideal in degree two sigma. And so, uh, and so since you can look at these two guys at the, in the quotient and they are both non-zero, right? At the quotient, and the quotient in this degree, which is the circle of, of the Jacobian ring, is one dimensional, right? So this implies that P delta one times Q is equivalent to some constant, non-zero constant, times P delta two times Q modulo the Jacobian ideal. And from this you get that the associated polynomial of delta one minus C times delta two times Q always lies in the Jacobian ideal, right? But, uh, so we show that for, for the generator of the quotient uh, ring in degree sigma, uh, this, belo this belongs to the Jacobian ideal, right? So this is zero. But if you take now an element which is in the, in the artin goldstein ideal, also the product will be in the Jacobian ideal by definition, right? So in particular, this implies, oh, sorry. Okay. So in particular, uh, this implies that this, 
delta 1 minus c delta 2 times anything of degree sigma is always uh, inside the Jacobian idea of degree 2 sigma, right? And so uh, this implies, in fact, that uh, this guy was in the Jacobian idea originally. Okay? And this is the same as saying that uh, the residue form associated to this polynomial is zero. And this is the same as saying that this is zero in primitive cohomology. Okay? So that's the proof. And so, well, this is just to illustrate that these very, very simple algebraic properties uh, can be used to show uh, this kind of, of, of result which I found like important. Okay, so the question now is, uh, so what do we know about these arting Weinstein ideals? So, uh, so well, we know that it's algebraic properties, but uh, we want to know uh, how to compute it, right? So there are some examples in where we, we are able to compute it. So for instance, uh, as I told you before, if you have a, a complete intersection, right? Then uh, the associated polynomial was this, right? Uh, up to some constant, the determinant of the Jacobian. And where these guys appear when you write F inside the ideal of C, right? So this comes from, from something like this. Right, so uh, from this you can compute the associated artin gonstein ideal and it will be just this ideal. Okay, and uh, the way to prove it, uh, well, there are various, uh, various ways to prove this, uh, but using this determinant is, is kind of easy because uh, so, as I told you before, if you have two artin gorenstein ideals and they have the same Sokol, then they are the same, right? I mean, if they have the same Sokol degree and at the Sokol they, they, con they coincide, then they are the same. In particular, if, if one of, if, if you have two artin, artin gorenstein ideals and one of them is contained in the other, then they are, they are the same, right? And so, uh, in order to prove this, you just need to prove one con uh, contention. And in order to prove this contention, you just have to take this guy, multiply by this guy, and, and, and see that it's inside this guy, right? And you can see that uh, I mean, this is very, very, it's linear algebra, right? This is matrix algebra, right? So you can take like, I, I will just do one, right? G, G1 times the determinant of the Jacobian matrix, right? So it's the partial derivative of F1 with X0, F1 with Xn plus 1, and the others, right? And, well, you take this guy, you put it here, and then you add some multiples of the others, and you will be able to change this, this column by, by just this, right? And then you take the determinant, is, and it's clearly in the Jacobian idea, right? So this will be in JS. And so, uh, so this is how you can prove this. 
And now, well, the, the part which is kind of missing is, is to show that this is also our Tinkerstein ideal, but this is very simple because of Macaulay theorem, right? This is a complete intersection ideal, and its vanishing is, is empty, right? So you're done. So a corollary of this fact, uh, with this you can show some, uh, you can show as a corollary uh, a result of, of Dan in the 14, 2014, uh, which says that uh, if C is a complete intersection, then uh, this, well, then the C uh, satisfies uh, the variational Hodge conjecture, and moreover, V of C is smooth, uh, reduced, and in fact, you can parameterize it. This is, is, I don't know, unirational. Uni uh, well, and you parameterize it explicitly, and, and the proof is, is trivial. Uh, you just take like the, f the most natural parameterization that you can imagine, which is just considering uh, the map phi, which goes from, from this uh, vector space. Uh, the variational Hodge conjecture claims that if you pick up an algebraic cycle and you look at this Hodge loci, then at every point of the, of the Hodge loci, the deformed algebraic cycle will be algebraic, right? I mean, the deformation so of the... What are you going to So, so this, this is an analytic scheme, right? Uh, so th th this, is, this is something that has... Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the Hodge loci. It's the place where it remains Hodge, and the variational Hodge conjecture says that it remains algebraic. Right? Oh. This is implied by the by the Hodge conjecture. It's a weaker statement. Okay. And so, uh, so the proof is this. So you take this map uh, to to. Yeah, to the space of polynomials. I, for me, T is the space of a smooth, uh, the, the space parameterizing all the smooth degree D uh, polynomials. And so, uh, well, the map is, is this one, right? Take P1, Q1, and so on. And map it to uh, this thing. Right? And, um, and this map, well, you can compute the derivative of this map, right? And so the image, uh, I mean, the derivative of this map at F1, G1, Fn over 2 plus 1, Gn over 2 plus 1, with respect to the vectors u1, v1, uh, this will be just like F1 times u1 plus G1 times v1, and so on. Right, and, uh, and clearly this, <laughs> this subjects into this, right? Right, which is the tangent space. So you are putting this inside the Hodge loci in such a way that the tangent space goes subjectively to the tangent space at each point, and so it projects, I mean, subjectively, and moreover, the image is smooth. 
right? And reduce and, and, and is parameterized by this, I mean, so uh, which, which is uh, which is a rational space. I mean, it's a vector space, right? Um, okay. So, um, which other examples do we have? Another example, so this is something that was informed to me by, by Remke Klusterman. So, uh, so consider now uh, another type of uh, algebraic cycle. For instance, uh, well, I will just state it in the case of uh, surfaces. So you can take x to be uh, f equals zero, but f will be uh, a determinantal uh, polynomial. So you can take something like this, f1, f2, f3, g1, g2, g3, h1, h2, h3, equal to zero, and you take your algebraic cycle, which you're assuming to be a curve given by the minors of this determinant, two by two, some of, of the minors, right? Like G1, H2 minus G2, H1, G1, H3 minus G3, H1, and G2, H3 minus G3, H2 equal to zero. Okay, so you're assuming that this is a curve inside your surface, right? And then um, <coughs> what you can show is that uh, the associated artin gorenstein ideal of this thing is, uh, is the following, is the ideal generated by all the two by two matrices, not just these three uh, uh, minors, but all the minors, where M is, is this one, right? And uh, uh, in particular, uh, this, you will have like a similar corollary, right? You will show that uh, now if you take one cycle of this type, the associated uh, Hodge loss I will be smooth, reduced, and unirrational. And the parametrization is, is, is here, it's this one, right? And it's easy, you, you do the same proof. You derive the thing and you will see that at each coordinate you will get like a vector here and, and the associated coefficient will be this minor. And you, you have to do this. I mean, it's just a very elementary thing, right? So you can say something about the BHC. So what's the hard part in this proof is, is, is just, well, proving the thing is, is, is kind of hard, but the same argument is telling you in some way that uh, you can always put this thing inside your artin gorenstein ideal, right? Because obviously this map is, 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 is taking your tangent space of this thing and it's putting it inside the tangent space of the associated Hodge loci and the tangent space is this J F divided by P delta of degree D, right? So you have this contention, you can use the duality to, to in fact prove that the, each of these elements, not, not just their multiples, are in, inside the ideal. And then you can show that this contention holds, right? But the hard part now, in order to conclude the equality, is to show that this is an Artin Gorenstein. Right? You don't have any more Macaulay theorem for this kind of things, right? And it's, it's, it's super hard to produce like a theorem of, of this type for this kind of, of ideal, right? And so in general, you can think of that whenever you have like a, like a nice component of the Hilbert scheme, right? Like a component that you can really parameterize it, which is like rational and it should gives you like a candidate of a new type 
of Artingonestein ideal, right? Of a different like flavor, right? Because you have the complete intersection, now you have these ones, and you can produce probably many more. And this is this is something that is yeah, well, this is like the the hard part of, of trying to prove these things in in more complicated context is having this 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 algebraic theorem that guarantees that that your ideal is starting This is this is the non-trivial thing. But I'm claiming that this gives you like hints of which are which ideas should be Artin Gorenstein in a very high generality. Okay. Um, so one example of this of this this example, like a sub example. If you, if you have an explicit uh, an explicit ideal, you can try to check, yeah, with the computer. No, no, no. This is this is difficult. I mean, this is an uh, this is a commutative algebra problem, a very hard commutative algebra problem, and this is why we we can prove this just in P3. You you can prove this with four coordinates, but for more than four, I don't know. I mean, this is Remke's proof. Oh. <laughs> I mean, this is something that he told me by email. He claims that he has the proof. Uh, <laughs> okay. So a sub-example here is, uh, for example, the twisted cubic. This, an example of, of this phenomenon is the twisted cubic where you take f to be the determinant f1, f2, f3, x0, x1, x2, x1, x2, x3, right? So inside this you have a twisted cubic. And this this example was was first done by by Hossein and uh, Emre. I think it was in 2019. And, uh, and so in this case, they also were able to prove this, to compute this idea. And uh, so. In fact, what they show, well, I'm not sure if they compute the full ideal, but at least I know that they show that in degree two, this corresponded to, to the ideal of the, I mean, the, this minus, right? X0, X2, X1, X2, 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 X squared, which is the ideal of the supporting uh, cycle, right? The ideal of the twisted cubic, right? And so, uh, so also this happens if you, if you take a complete intersection, you can you can take it in such a way that uh, the degree of fi, if you take it in such a way that the di is less or equal than the half of the degree, then when you look at the small degree generators, you will get the equation of the supporting algebraic cycle, right? So in general, this, this uh, led uh, Hossein and Emre to, to ask, uh, I mean, because, I mean, this was kind of surprising because this Artin Gorenstein ideal is something which is really build from the cohomology class, right? So once you take the cohomology class, you are like, I mean, you're, you, you compute this artin Weinstein ideal and you see the equations of the supporting algebraic cycle, right? And so, well, we say that uh, an algebraic cycle, C, is generated by its periods if uh, there exists some some representative right well now if it's well if this representative of the cohomology class satisfies that the ideal of C is generated 
by the degree less or equal than some e pieces of the Artin-Gorenstein ideal associated to the class of C, right, for some e less than uh, d minus 1, right? And, well, and you can say that it's generated by periods at level e, okay? So this is something that happens for complete intersections, that happens for, for the twisted cubic, and you can ask if this is like a good strategy for trying to cook up equations from a cohomology class of an algebraic cycle or of a Hodge cycle, right? This goes like in the direction of finding like an explicit approach to the, to the Hodge conjecture, right? And, uh, well, so this is okay for complete intersections, uh, maybe also for these determinantal cycles. But, uh, but, well, there is a result of Sifani, uh, Pirola, and Schlesinger from 2021, where they prove that if you take a, an arithmetically called Macaulay curve in, in a surface, uh, in any surface, uh, yeah, in a, in a surface uh, in P3, uh, all these curves are generated by uh, their periods. Okay, but uh, there are examples where this doesn't happen. Doesn't happen. So uh, this is part also of the of their work. Uh, so they prove that uh, but rational curves of degree four in a, in a quartic surface uh, they are not generated from their periods. And also, uh, the algebraic cycles that uh, Jorge introduced yesterday, so these fake linear cycles uh, are not generated by periods. Right, I mean, if you remember these fake linear cycles, they had like, the Artin and Gorenstein ideal of, of these guys were something like this. Plus. And so if, if they were generated by periods, the only option is that the supporting equation should be this, right? But we show that there exists this fake linear cycle in such a way that these things are not, are not the this root of unity of minus one. And so this implies that if you take these equations and you look at the, at the linear cycle generated by it, it's not contained in the variety, right? It's not contained at Fermat, so it's, it's impossible that this is, these are the supporting equations. So. No, 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 it's like the whole opposite thing of being rigid, I think it's like, it's like to being a very nice component of the Hilbert scheme. Yeah, the idea changed, yeah. But in these cases, it, it doesn't change. You see, right? I mean, complete intersection and uh, the terminal cycles, the ideal doesn't change. I mean, it changed the, uh, the, uh, the equation of this, of each generator, but the degrees, the amount of generator, the Hilbert function doesn't change it. I, 
I don't know what else. Yeah, 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 that's true. I mean, but but in this case, I mean, this this case, you're not seeing anything, right? Here, you look at the equations and you don't see anything to reasonably supporting your cycle. In fact, the fake linear cycles are huge combinations of mostly all linear cycles at the Fermat variety. And so you you won't see anything here. I mean, probably the I mean, of course, the equations will be here, but you are not able to see them directly by taking like a small degree generators. You, you won't see anything. Yeah, I mean, it's up to up to equivalence in primitive cohomology. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I mean, in the examples that we have, uh, and, and, and yeah, and that's, that's an observation that I wanted to do. So, for instance, so the question is, right? So, when can we read the equations in this thing, right? So, uh, in fact, so, uh, so if, if, you, if you take, if you, are, you assume that the, the primitive part of the thing has up to some multiple, a representative in primitive cohomology, which is uh, in such a way that C is, is, uh, uh, is reducible, but, well, smooth, I, I will say, in order to, to do it easier for me. Uh, so, uh, and you pick, and so if you pick any, any polynomial in the ideal of C, right, then whenever you pick up any residue form of this type, and you integrate it over C, it will be zero, right? I mean, obviously it will be zero. It, it will vanish over C, right? And so this implies that, that F times Q times the polynomial associated to C must be zero in the Jacobian ring, which is the same as saying that F times any Q belongs to JFZ or JF delta, uh, which implies that F is in fact inside JF delta. And so this is containing the supporting ideal of C, right? So one question is, uh, how can we read if there exists a representative which is at least irreducible inside this thing? Uh, this is not trivial at all, right? But for instance, uh, so this gives rise to some questions. So, uh, so can we 
know uh, from this thing if there exists an irreducible or prime uh, representative. Uh, can we say more? Can we say something about the, the, like the geometry of the, of the representative, right? So for instance, here I have a question which I, I really don't know how to answer, but it seems to me like if you, if you know that f belongs to this thing squared, uh, does this imply that this thing has a complete intersection representative? I don't know, but using just this fact, I was able to characterize the next component, I mean, the next co-dimension component of the Hodge loss I passing through the Fermat variety, which corresponds to a complete intersection of type one, 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 two, right? So, but I, I'm not sure if this, is, if this implies that, I mean, at the end, in that case, it implied that there exists a, such a representative. Okay, so, um, well, with the time left, I just want to tell you very briefly uh, about what uh, other accounts, what we have been doing with Jorge. So, we considered uh, the following construction. We considered a join of algebraic cycles. So what is for me, what is for us a join? So you're in the following uh, situation. So you are inside Pn plus one. And even you, you take, uh, you take two linear spaces which are not intersecting each other. So here you take Pn plus one and here you take Pn minus n minus one. So they generate, if you take the join of these two things, you generate the full projective space. And here, uh, so inside this guy, you will take an, an hypersurface in such a way that it satisfies the following thing. So here, so let's say that the coordinates here are, are x, right, x zero, until xn plus one. And here you have the coordinates y zero until y n minus n minus one. And here you take the coordinates, the, all the coordinates, right? So you're just dividing the equations, I mean the, the coordinates into two separate sets, okay? And you, as you take your hypersurface in such a way that, that you can, uh, divided like in two hypersurfaces in each of these coordinates, right? So here you have like x1 given by f of x equal to zero. Here you have x2 given by g of y equal to zero of the same degree. And, and here you take an hypersurface x, which is f of x plus g of y equal to zero, right? And then inside this thing, you take an algebraic cycle of the half of the dimension C1, you take here an algebraic cycle of the half of the dimension C2, and you take the join of these two algebraic sub-varieties, right? So what, what is the join? It's just uh, pick any point here, any point here, and, and take the full line, connect it then, okay? So take this guy. So this is of dimension, uh, this is of dimension M, this of dimension m over two, this is of dimension n minus m minus two, n minus m over two minus one, and this is of dimension n over two, right? The half of the dimension of this guy, okay? So this is a way 
to produce an algebraic cycle inside this thing from algebraic cycles inside each of these hypersurfaces, okay? And the question is, how do they, their associated polynomials relate to each other, okay? So we'll, our theorem Our theorem, this is like the other day. So the associated polynomial to the join will be up to some non zero rational constant, which is explicit, the product of both associated polynomials in, in their corresponding rings. And this implies in particular that that the artin gonstein ideal associated to these guys, this thing, is the tensor product, uh, I mean, of the associated artin gonstein algebra. This is F. Okay. And so, well, this is kind of explaining where, where, why, why do we have this shape for the polynomial associated to a linear cycle? Because in the linear cycle case, we were exactly doing this, right? We separated the, va the variables into pairs, right? And at each pair, we considered one point. One point, one point, one point, and then we took the join of this thing. And this is how you build the linear cycle, right? And the form of the polynomial was totally decomposable into these uh, two, uh, two binomials, uh, polynomials, right? Depending just on, on two variables, right? And, and each of them was like a, the polynomial associated to a point inside a zero-dimensional hypersurface of P1, right? And so this in particular implies the existence of the, I mean, explains in some sense the existence of fake uh, linear cycles, right? Because what, what are the fake linear cycles? They are a zero dimension. At the end, you can construct them by joints also in the very same way. But uh, for degree three, four, and six, there will exist some, uh, some zero dimensional cycles which are not a point, the class of only one point, but they will have an associated polynomial very similar to the polynomial of a, of a, of a point, to the polynomial associated to a one point, right? So uh, the, the only difference will be this coefficient, these ci's, that you can take it like, not necessarily at this root of minus one, right? And so, yeah, um, so for instance, well, one advantage of, of having this is that you can read from this the, the Hilbert function, right? So the Hilbert function, the Hilbert function of, of, the, of this ring, right? Or, or of this cycle, of, of the artin gorenstein ring associated to the cycle, right? some degree E will be just the sum, right? Yeah, I don't know, K. Right, and this is explaining, in fact, so you could, ch you could think that, for instance, uh, you, you, you can try to characterize a Hodge loci just by characterizing the co-dimension of its tangent space, right? This is what we were trying to do with the, with the linear cycles, and we landed in this fake, fake linear cycle. Characterizing them by, by the co-dimension of the tangent space is the same as characterizing them by the value of this Hilbert function at D, the volume of the Hilbert function at, at one point, right? You could think that this is not good enough, right? Maybe you can, you would like to characterize them by the, full lean, by the full Hilbert function, but this is also not good enough, right? Why? Because this is telling you that if you construct one algebraic cycle by a join, 
right? If you can replace this guy by another guy who has the same Hilbert function, but which is not in the deformation of this guy, then you will produce, produce like a fake representative of this joint, right? You will produce like something that has the same Hilbert function, but it's not what you expect. It's, in, it's not in the same uh, component of the Hodge locus, right? And at the end, the, this ex explains that the presence of fake linear cycles uh, is something that you can reduce to zero dimension, right? At the end, the only thing that you care is given like this equation, right? x0 to the d plus x1 to the d equal to zero, which is the set of d points inside P1. You want to look for algebraic cycles in such a way that their associated polynomial, I mean their associated Hilbert function, is the same as the, as the Hilbert function of a point. This means that this is one for all, uh, for all e from zero until d minus, uh, d minus two and zero otherwise. So this is the, the thing. At the end, what we prove is that at degree three, four, and six, there exists some other things having this kind of, of Hilbert function. And if you change the equation, probably you will, you will find this kind of fake things uh, in other degrees, right? I mean, this is at the end just a field extension problem, right? Well, uh, I will finish. <laughs>